Hey guys, this is Steph. The Marcus, aka okay, Energy Doctor CT. You're watching Connect Create. Connect, create, connect, and create. Welcome to the Communication with Masters Masterclass. Meet the Masters. Steph is an all-round creative contributor and consultant with a passion for African storytelling and new media. Her time is split between the editing and curation of digital stories for three of Zimbabwe's emerging dynamic showcases across arts, business and religion, and leading projects with the likes of the National Gallery of Zimbabwe to make creative spaces more accessible for everyday people. Steph has a vested interest in securing Africa's place in the digital revolution and ensuring that amazing creatives are brought into the digital spotlight. Marcus Junawashe, also known as The Marcus or The Energy Doctor, is a multidisciplinary creative and one half of the mural and graffiti art collective Calligraph. Marcus is a storyteller whose language of expression is creating. His idea is, to create is to live and to express is to feel alive. Through Calligraph, Marcus has collaborated with brands such as the British Council, Paul Zimbabwe, British Embassy, Paper Bag Africa, National Gallery in Bulawayo, amongst many others. Connect Create is supported by the British Council through the Digital Collaboration Agile Grant that helps to promote and enhance the profiles of women in leadership and to support creative skills development. So I'm Steph. <laughs> it's probably a good place to start. Uh, my, my job involves, my job, my existence involves keeping Enthuse Africa and Afrotopia afloat. Afrotopia is just a space where we hope these young people can solve some of our day-to-day -day problems. Um, they can create and they can interact and they can collaborate and just be, you know, be creative, be who they are at their core as artists. And so this is what we're hoping to be able to empower them with. Because <laughs> sometimes all you need is space, right? All sometimes you just need a space to be who you are as an artist, as a person, as a young person who is navigating adulthood. So this is our little safe haven. Salibonani, how are you, Magadi? I mean, like guys, you know, a whole very versatile in all the languages of Zimbabwe, as far as we are concerned, though. My name is Marcus Rinawashe, a.k.a. The Marcus, a.k.a. Energy Talk, to talk hotel one four. I'm giving you the vibes each and every time. For those that really have got, you know, my WhatsApp number, you know, they wake up to all of these vibes in the morning, you know. It's not rehearsed, guys. It's like, you know, it's internalized. It's, it has become a lifestyle and, you know, it's a beautiful experience because I come, all of this ener energy is because, of, you know, coming up and growing up into different spaces and places. So you can't help but just become, you know, you know an authentic uh, version of yourself. And, you know, after a while when you actually genuinely get to a space where you actually, you know, uh, are happy being yourself. And, you know, you're not, tr you're not trying to be nobody. You're just trying to be the only person that you know better, which is you. So... That's that kind of space, and you know, it's energy talk to out here. I am a coma, I consider myself a creator, not like God, though. But I mean, like, still, we are we are made in his own image, so in our own instance, we are also what creators. So, why I consider myself a creator is because I'm a multidisciplinary creative whose expression really is all built upon creating. Um, I think I was, I've always been a storyteller. I've, I've always told stories. I have always written things down, either as poetry or, you know, keeping a diary or a journal. Um, my mom often reminds me that as, as a kid, it didn't matter where we were going, I always had a notebook and a pen from the time I could write. Um, and it was writing my thoughts, my feelings. I was a bit of an emo kid, so, you know, oh, my feelings would go into the <laughs> journal. And that, that's just who I've been through and through. Um, and so I always wrote. I don't think I always wrote well, but I always wrote expressively. 
I, I, I would express myself and I always had an outlet. And I also used to, I would speak a lot. I spoke out and because that was the type of um, environment I was in. I, I, had, I had the opportunity to express myself. I was encouraged to express myself, even though uh, it was not commonplace. So I was just this kid who was expressive. Um, so from there, um, I developed a certain eloquence um, about how I, I, would, I would speak to people, how I would engage. I was um, outspoken and stuff like that. I grew up in a really small town in Wange. And this was very, <laughs> this was not commonplace, you know. Um, so from there, from high school, debate club, I'll be asked to present things. Never made it to prefect. Too much of a rebel to, to ever have made it <laughs> to prefect. Um, but, you know, fast, fast tracking. Um, uni space, got into campus, campus news, got into uh, campus radio, uh, failed the first two times. They wouldn't let me in. Um, funny enough, coming from being a young kid who was really expressive, suddenly getting into young adulthood and turning into like a little mouse because I knew I had things to say, but I just was too self-conscious to say them. So the first two times, um, I remember, well, Lady K was one of the, one of the judges who was already a, on, on the campus radio team for a couple of years. And she's like, girl, speak out, <laughs> you know, say, speak out, you know, as you push her glasses up and up, speak out, Steph. You have to speak out because if you're not going to speak out, then why do you want to be on radio? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I've got things to say, so say them. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try. And I was still mousy, but that's how I kind of got my voice um, on radio. So from, that was in Namibia. And then from radio in Namibia, uh, got into voiceover work and then came back home, got into ZBC. Um, I think I was the second youngest, uh, second youngest um, radio presenter at the time and learned to produce radio and stuff like that. So writing was, oh, I left out the part where I was studying banking and finance. <laughs> I was studying banking and finance. Had to drop out. Then, listen, listen, listen. Uh, in English, apparently, you can't make money from creative. That is, that is, that is the old school way of thinking. This is what our folks believed and also I didn't really know that I had those options honestly I didn't even know I didn't even identify as a creative until a year and a half ago you know I didn't know I could have a creative career you know so and I think my parents also you know I mean 60s 70s they, they didn't consider that as an option it was like oh you want to be a banker go for it child you know do it <laughs> you know sounds like that's a noble job go for it you know so um that's what I was studying and then Got into, got into ZBC, and in that space, I, that's where, in the ZBC environment, is where I owe all my journalistic principles. People laugh and scoff, and, you know, they have every right to laugh. But I, 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 wasn't, I, I wasn't a journalist until I was at ZBC, until I learned how to produce programming, until I learned how to load a tape recorder, <laughs> how to loop it and all that jazz, you know. And that's where I learned a lot of the journalistic principles. But while I was there, now I told you that starting up one gay, basically last kid, last kid in the family, but also only kid because everyone else was pretty grown up. My parents uh, say I was a gift, if you know what I mean. They were quite advanced in age. <laughs> they were not expecting me. I just showed up. I was like, hello, like the sunflower I am. And so I was alone a lot, watched a lot of TV. Um, your MTV, grew up on MTV, grew, hence the accent. Grew up on a lot of MTV, grew up on a lot of international TV and games and stuff. And so was not exposed to African content, uh, content was not exposed to Zimbabwean content, you know. So discovering Wana Ezum Gido in high school it was not a great look, <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, fast track to that, I'm at ZBC and I'm wondering, you know, there are probably a number of people like me who don't know the amazing stories of musicians, writers, poets. They don't know these people exist because none of this stuff is put on blast. It's not on radio. 
when is the last time? And at this time, this was not, it was not commonplace for you to interview a poet on, on radio. It was not commonplace for you to attend festivals and, you know, put that on blast. Like, these performances, this, look at all this cultural and creative stuff that's happening in the country. You know, I want to showcase it. And so I, I bit from the BBC version of Front Row, and I just started Front Row at the fair. And with Front Row, that was pretty much it. It was a very, um, the journalists will appreciate, it was a very vox pop type of thing. So it was really audios with ambient sound. It wasn't high quality recordings, but I would just borrow, I would borrow Anna Meaty's recorder. And I, and I was like, Anna, I'll give it back to you soon. And then off I would go to Book Cafe and I would be speaking to people. I was like, so what do you think of this show? What do you think? And you know, this is how like my journalistic uh, experience was kind of being warned. Like this is how you ask questions. This is, you know, I got out, I got the, 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 the mistakes out of my system when I was in ZBC, right? When it comes to storytelling. And so in that space, that's when I developed like a sense of, okay, I want to tell stories. And this is how I can do them, via radio. And, and, and that, was, that was how that went. And then I left ZBC, or ZBC left me. And there I was, a university dropout, unemployed, no plan. And I thought to myself, is it possible, ooh, excuse me, is it possible to carry on what I was doing, but in a different medium? Like, how do we, how do we go about it? Um, and it came as a dream, the whole enthused thing it was a dream, it was a vision. And a lot of people look, look at me like, eh, and I'm like, no, really, no, really, yeah, no. Generally, uh, I'll take credit for things that are my thing, but it was a vision. And so the vision linked into what I was already doing at ZBC, and it was pretty simple. Start a magazine. Start a magazine. Carry on what you're doing. You already have the connections that you had before. You already are part of the community. Speak to them. Write their stories. Tell their stories. Amplify their stories. And so Enthu started with a, yo, can you make this website for me? I don't have any money. To mom and dad, I know you don't have money, but can I just have this much so that I can register a domain? If you can think back to about six years back, how much a, a domain was and how much hosting a website costed. Like, it was so expensive. I think, I think it was as ridiculous as 150, I think. Yeah, it was, it was pretty insane. No, it was pretty insane. And then to imagine that now, like, you could get it for a dollar, a dollar to five bucks, you know, if you know your way around the internet. So that was, that was, that was really about it. And so enthused. Enthuse Africa, the domain name, launched on the 15th of July, 2015. And so that, that happened. A couple of articles, asked some friends to write articles that started off very, very artsy fartsy and very complex. And I, I don't know Joe Black personally, but I'm forever, I'm eternally grateful because he was very he was very infamous for being a bit of a be, a being a bit of a am I, am I allowed to use expletives? I don't think I am. So how else can I say this? Um, he was not the nicest guy in the room on Twitter. <laughs> he was really the guy who said the things he said the things that you know would probably just rub you the wrong way, you know and Here's the thing, half the time they were just, he would just state his facts and move on. And so he said, you know what? You're saying one thing. These enthused people, you guys are talking about the irony of these enthused people talking about bringing arts and creativity to the masses and writing like they're, writing like they're still speaking to the elite. I'm like, oh, how dare you? It was so rude and it was so life changing because it made me look at the content and say oh man he's right we are writing very we are writing you know we are critiquing art you know like we're speaking to art connoisseurs we are yeah yeah no we we, we are being quite hypocritical right now he's right he's right we need to change how we speak we need to change how we communicate you know and from then on 
we took on a very blog style type of writing. You know, it was quite a turn, turning point. Um, and we're right. We're just right about people, the underdogs, people that people didn't know about. You know, Gemma from back way then, when nobody knew who she was. And she was singing covers for, you know, covers at corporate, corporate events and stuff like that. You know, those stories, her giving her background about who she was and stuff like that. Shasha from before, from way before no one, no one really cared, you know, at that point. Um, to some of them, some, some, a lot of people were still pretty underground anyway, but that had remarkable stories. And we always, we always had, and I think even more now, like the Enthuse Mag team has its own kind of direction. I was just saying to our head storyteller today that I nearly fainted because I, when I saw an article, I was like, the headline was so, was so out there. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, this is going to be so painful to deal with on, on Twitter or whatever. You know, so it has its own direction, but it's always, it's always been consistently very out there, very, we're going to talk about the taboo stuff. We're going to represent um, the underdogs. We're going to, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about sex. We will talk about anything and everything that makes us as, as a society, as a Zimbabwean, African community, uncomfortable. All the things that we want to sweep under the rug. Um, things that we, we don't know about, you know. So the idea is edutainment. Don't love that word, but then that's the best way I can put it. So all that taboo. And we weren't having these candid conversations. I mean, I think there's a lot of really cool work, you know. I'll be really inspired checking out um, Zimbo Jam, checking out Three Men on a Boat. They were always on top of the news, always like creatively, that always had news to the T. And when, when I started out, I didn't have the money or the equipment to catch up with that pace at all. I had a fridge of a laptop. Um, I had no Wi-Fi. I had no financial backing, nothing at all. So there was no, no contest. I also didn't have a plan about how we're actually going to be able to fund all the things that we wanted to do. I just knew that these stories needed to be told. And um, it was just a necessity that we, we figure it out as, as we go along. So we took the option of just, look, let's talk about every single thing that makes us uncomfortable, everything we're not ignoring. Let's look at progressive views. Let's look at alternative, alternative ways of thinking and looking at, at things. So if if Abel, Abel Moro, who's Abel? Yes, Abel Moro or whatever, it's not just about, oh, there's this training thing here, but it's social commentary over the little and the big things. So the, the headline I was, I was freaking out at was, as you know, TB, TB Joshua passed on. And the headline is along the lines of, oh, he left behind a legacy of homophobia. And <laughs> I'm like, whoo, they're going to burn us at a stake now, <laughs> you know. But it has to be spoken because we have who is, who is, who is holding people accountable in a non-politically charged way. But just as who is questioning religion? Who is, who is, who, we're not doing enough of that. Who, how, who is documenting these alternative ways of thought, these controversial ideas? And that's what Enthuse Mag really has morphed into. When, when I started, this is not what I had in mind, <laughs> but it has become a voice for the voiceless and also um, a source for creators as well. Creators want to know if, oh, what's, what's happening with so-and-so? Oh, someone got promoted, they're doing this, you know. So it's for the creators. Um, it's by a lot of creators as well. And it's also pretty focused on communicating these progressive ideas and sharing opportunities as well. So the grand opportunities here, the grand opportunities there. So Enthuse Mag was really the foundation of how, how we began. Um, and then morphed into OK com Corporate and Vic Falls Party Bus and all the other things. But Enthuse Mag is really the solid foundation, which was, look, we want, we're digital storytellers. We want to tell stories. And that's, that's, that's really it. I'm here today because, you know, at the forefront of what we do, we have got a baby called Caligra. This baby does amazing things. And by now, I think, you know, uh, you, if you haven't known about it, I mean, pretty much pretty soon, 
it'll also be doing other big and greater things. You will know about it. Maybe it's not. It's just not time. So what we do at Calligraph is we um, we create. Uh, we are we consider so we consider ourselves as a public art and creative direction collective, which uh, which our expression really is based on paint. We do murals. We do graffiti. We do set designing. You know. And uh, part of what we do really is uh, done in communities. Uh, we are, our ethos and at the heart of what we do, uh, our vision really is about how can we bring, and not just bring color guys, but breathe color within the city, within communities, within the country. And you know, the plan really is to go all the way to Africa, start with Africa and before we go to the board. But if the board embraces us first, Africa, we have to deal with you later. But so far, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here four years later and you know, happy that every province within Zimbabwe has a bit of what we have done. You know. Hey, hey, hey hands of applause, guys. <laughs> hands of applause. Now, I, and also I've learned to be my, my own hive man, guys, you know. I mean, if you're watching this, understand that, you know, I, I, if you love what you do, guys, you can't wait for people to come out and be like, you know, we see you. No, no, no. I see myself because I look at myself in the mirror. Even today, look at the boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's it, guys. Um, Calligraph really is like, uh, th that. that's what I do. I'm a founder at Calligraph. Uh, we co-founded Calligraph, me and Nyasha That was in 2017, yeah. Right after it came out from school, and really the bigger part of why we, why and why, why we find ourselves as calligraphs, really starting something about that is really, you know, I think part of us really was all about how can we create something of our own, but more important, how can we tell our own stories? Because we both, we are two, we, like I say, like callig we consider ourselves like creators, like calligraph. Uh, Nisha comes with um, his uh, his background is visual art. He comes from an artistic family. My my background is uh, is is creating, right? But more importantly, I also my my parents really both of them were teachers. They were teachers before they retired, right? So really, it's all of those things. How really also how we I think we raise also is also contributing who we are. We have been forever been supported towards what we want to do. Uh, there's always one thing that uh, in my family, in our household, that we have been taught. What you, we, we, you'll be asked the question, what do you want to do? And you, and you say what you want to do. They'll be like, go ahead and do that. All what we can do is support you. Because then they are the ones steering your ship towards where you want to steer it. If you decide to steer it, well, within the trees, the mountain, and the bushes, the arts are new. If you decide to, to steer it within the deeper waters of life and actually, you know, build a castle on the water while you at it, you know, that's still you. And then they just go ahead and try and do the best that you can do because that's who you are. So that's, that's pretty much uh, one of the most beautiful and amazing thing that I find uh, amazing, having a family that's for you, a family that supports you. Because it's actually difficult for family to support, especially the, the arts in Zimbabwe, really haven't gravitated to a space where you look at them and say, wow, you know, they're just a few, few people that have done meaningful and amazing things, and people just say, okay, that when, when, when a kid says, I, when I grow up, I want to be this, then, you know, their parent can look at and be like, yeah, go ahead and do this. And also, I think also the, the industry really hasn't been got into a space where it has it, it got into its full bloom. You know, you go outside uh, of our country, closer to warm South Africa, and, you know, you see why you see a creative and you know you can also get uh, you also get to understand why sometimes people say you can't be you can't be creative and be broke at the same time because you look at them and you're like genuinely this this brother here has got gigs and gigs and gigs like literally you have to book and to uh, and make an appointment and say bro i would like to see you at this point in time you know drop some gems let's have coffee or can i take along with what what you're doing so that you learn and that's also one thing that we do we we are firm at calligraph we are firm we are really a fan of traveling because traveling really opens and expands your mind. And, 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 and really it's, it's what, other than it being therapeutic towards you just getting out of your space, it also allows you to see the world with a different pair of eyes because every environment really inspires and makes you see the world in a different space altogether. So, 
But other than that, um, I as the energy doctor, you know, I'm all about good vibes, positive vibes each and every time, because I feel like, you know, the world is too negative out here. You know, people can be who they want to be. I choose to lead by love. I choose to have a big smile. Even on my, even on my worst days, I'm like, hey, but I'm alive, most, you know. When I woke up, you know, God say, fuck away now. You know, there was another person who probably, they got the resources, all the resources that they may want in the world, but they couldn't get the time. So when I'm on top of the ground, you know, it's a blessing just stepping on top of the ground. You know, that's why we look good every time. We wake up, we dress up, look good, make sure we smell good at the same time. Because you know, it's all about you being a good representation of the day and saying, you know what, let me go ahead, let me do something about it, and uh, let me be the best that I can be. And, you know, live more, be more, be the light more. Because, you know, the world is a little bit darker. You know, you look, you got COVID out there. You got, you know, people have also lost a whole lot of things with this pandemic altogether. But at the same time, you know, you look at life, you look at life and be like, it might be crazy to be smarting in all of this mayhem, but if your energy is good, right, and pure and true to you, why not? The all that's the bigger question every day I ask myself. Why not do differently? Why not do you? And on that, that's why, you know, when you look at Calligraph, you know, our tagline really is done differently. It's done already. The question is how, it's different. So every time, whenever we do things, the difference is what we're looking at. First and foremost, everything that we do is intentional. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of intention, uh, not, just as far as, not just as far as what I do, but as far as who I am as an individual. Like, uh, whatever that I do, I, I'm sending a message. When I, when I walk out, when you see me walking in the street, how I walk, how I talk to you, how I represent, how, like even my smile is intentional, guys. Like, it's, like to the T, it has to be intentional. And that's it, it's exactly the same, it's exactly that very same energy that I carry, that also Nyasha carry, that everybody within the collective carries, that, you know, we make sure that everything that we do is intentional. Part of our inspiration really is where we come from because all of us, I've got a nomadic background, so I've stayed pretty much in every different other part of, be it uh, suburban, the north side of the suburbs, the southern side of, the southern side is where pretty much I really, is, is really nurtured me. I've stayed Kumosha as well. So, so all of those influences really are what is nature does. The stories around all of those spaces are rich, diverse in who they are, but more importantly, how can we start telling those stories and owning up to them and making sure that they live within our walls? I, I, I pretty much look at ourselves as like the the urban um, the urban the urban coins. We're imprinting the stories of our day on walls. Unfortunately, and for, unlike then where they will use uh, different pigments, blood, also to put to put them on walls, we are taking all of that. We we are telling our own stories using paint. So that, that, that's who we are. So we do all, uh, part of, all of our stories really are around, you know, uh, around communities. And so most of our, if you, if you had to recognize, you recognize most of our murals really are on the southern side. If it was Harare, then it is the southern side, southern most part of Harare. Because we were like, how can we inspire the ghetto kid coming up and looking at me like, it's possible, it can be done. You know, uh, I see, and then if they were to ask you, are you even making a livelihood through doing what you're doing? Yes, I'm living, making a livelihood. So it's intentional what I'm doing. Uh, stories, some, sometimes we paint to inspire for somebody just to pass by because also color, there's color. When you look at color, there's color psychology. There's a way of how when you see a certain color, when you see yellow, what it does to you, when you see reds, when you see your orange, when you see black, white, grays. It's all color psychology. So sometimes you're working with all of that and also sometimes bit by bit talking to, and most of our murals really as much as it is, and uh, okay, bit by bit you're also making, you're also getting to change people's minds by viewing things and getting to appreciate that certain part of these things are part of their what? Part of their culture, part of who they are. So that said, you then look at it and be like, okay, cool, this is, this is where it's at. So 
more importantly, the work that we do is also meant for the kids. Because I think the, the kids still see it differently. The kids, it still warms the kids' heart, more importantly, because when you're an adult, the day-to-day the -day, uh, responsibility sometimes uh, gives you a disconnect towards the things that really are also are for you. Because you're like, I need to do, to get one, two, three things done. But the kid is able to look around and see that and be like, wow. So this really was once an idea, but now it's here. So it's also about possibilities, right? So that said, as much as it is also about possibilities, then get to a space where you're like, okay, cool. If it's about possibilities, then it's like this. So, and also it's not just possibilities alone. It's sometimes what can you, what are we saying? Using murals, using art as a means of education, means of awareness. What other topics that are being topical that are not being talked about? Or what other conversation can we have? But sometimes the, the breadth of something really needs a spark. So sometimes with what we do, we're like, okay, cool. How can we create conversations, right? Hence, some pieces really, we leave them out there so people could start then understanding that, okay, cool. If this mural, if this mural is saying girl power, what exactly is they talking about? Why? Manasikana, why? Why in Tombazan? Right. Why the girl with child? Why in this era, in this point in time? Why this? Why now? Right? And what's the breadth of it? It's, it's all about then, you know, with the moment when you start asking yourself all of those questions, why, 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 why? And then you also then come to come back and then start understanding, even when the girl child sees that, sees possibilities. Right? That's why when you look at our, the campaign that we did for International Women's Day, and uh, hashtag girl power, ZW, uh, the project being Andradzi Umnawami, right? Uh, you, you look at it, it's, it's how, can also, how can we also celebrate our own? But more important, how can we familiarize and make it, and make it very plain and simple to understand to somebody how important and integral Umfazi is in the society, a woman is in the community, and a woman and what she adds on to who we have become. So, so the International Women's Day uh, murals that we, it was actually like a whole month we were actually painting that. So it was, you know, it was commemorating the women that have done the most. So when that, that, but more important, all of these women they're still alive, eh? Also giving, also giving flowers while these people are still, are still there. Or well, someone can really go there and look at a mural and be like, and it was different, it was diverse. One of the most beautiful is like, we're very intentional. You look at uh, Manda Temloj or what he's doing within her space and what she continuously speaks about as far as youth is concerned, you're like, wow, mind blowing. Sandra Debele, Umambusi, you know, you look at Perita, what she's doing outside. Like, it's different, diverse women doing different, amazing things. Boma Hawks in different spaces, but more importantly, what are they saying, the narrative, and also what are they conscientizing, and what can also another, you know, another, another, another young, whether it's a boy child, whether it's a girl child, look and be like, you know, it's possible. Because guys, it's about, the, the reality really is about possibilities, right? If I grew up and there were no possibilities that I could see on my own, but I had to discover because I had to, you know, I'm, I consider myself a nomad. Because the nomadic nature of who I, the nomadic nature of how I grew up, really, made me see and made me get into certain spaces and understand certain things differently. How can also another kid? How can all of those experiences that I had to hone over time be expressed in one, probably one simple beautiful mural that another kid can look at and be like, "Wow, it's possible, Joe." I can I can come from where I'm at and I can be celebrated by my people. You know, how can we make it common? How can we make it common to be Zimbabwean and still be amazing and still celebrate our art? Because it always kind of feels like we are we are always trying to tear each other down. Why not build ourselves up? Why not build ourselves up? Right? Why not have 
one of the dopest elements in Zimbabwe because you travel all around, right? You see all of these things amazing, all of these amazing things in other people's cities. But you're like, why not our own? Why not have a whole city of Harare say, you know what, guys, we, we need something amazing at the heart of the city. Yes, we have done one along the board, but why can we not do seven stories up? Because obviously, on my a part of me is like, obviously, we want to do something, you know, we want, to, we, we want what we do also to be standing toe-to-toe -to -toe as far as other people that are doing it, internationally doing it. I want to be Zimbabwean, guys. I want to, I want to be proud. I, I want people to look, at, to look at not just what we do, but my, my hope really is, how can we be Zimbabwean? and be proud, and be happy about being Zimbabwean, and also be like, you know, we dope, we dope people. Because we're constantly looking all over Africa and saying, oh, Nigerians are dope, oh, this person is dope, oh, this person is dope, but how can we not be that dope? On an international platform, stand toe to toe with the best, and actually be the best, not, not come off as trying to be the best, but genuinely be the best. Because you're doing it at the, at the level and the skill set, and at the and at the rate at which it's supposed to be done. So it's it's a whole lot of things, but you know, I'm passionate about it. And, you know, eventually I know things are things bit by bit, you know, are working out for the good, but more importantly, they're working out to become even more more phenomenal. Because phenomenal is the is the is the epitome of where we're trying to take things. Not good, mm -hmm. not best, not you know, ah, I said, no, 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 I said, no, 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 phenomenal. Hmm. Wow, that's a hectic one, hey? Um, because I feel like it's really, it's a bit bittersweet. Like, so I always put this disclaimer, progressive Christian here, because it always seems as if, um, a lot of my opinions uh, come off as contradictory um, to the word. But I continuously make reference to, and the greatest of all these is love. Always. So love, always. So from a point of big sister or mother hen, um, you look at this, this, this generation, which I... I, I am semi a part of this generation is quite empowered I feel they are quite you know dare I say a little bit actualized you know um some very fierce women that know they are very outspoken they are unapologetic and it's because we have thanks to NGO support and campaigns and stuff from the time they were little girls, they were told that we are empowering you, we are empowering you, we are empowering you, you know what I mean? Um, and so they are liberated, you know. They, they dress how they feel. They um, use their bodies how they feel. They are open and, and they speak. And I find that very inspiring. I do. I do. And then I find that then there's a mismatch with your, the societal norms. So it seems like we've left the boys out of the conversation for a little too long. And I feel like the boys have been left behind. So there's a mismatch. This is what I just see. Like there's, there's a mismatch. And the mismatch is that the boys then either cower or they clamp down. And then the more progressive ones just engage normally. So when they cower, they are intimidated and they run out the other way. Um, so unlike, unlike for, for us, our generation, where if you wanted to sit at the boys' table, you have to be a boy yourself. I feel like this generation has been liberated in that you can be, you can be absolutely, you could be a bombshell 
you know, you could be all, you could be all legs, you could be all skin, and you can walk in and you will still take over that conversation. Now, this is at peer level. And the gatekeepers are the older generation. And they know that the younger women are fiery and they're hungry. So I would say like the difficulty in that is it's bittersweet because their their bodies, our bodies, our choices, and that's absolutely okay with me. However, you find that patriarchy still wins. Because even though a few of the young women will say, you know what, it's just sex, whatever. I've got what I wanted and I'm moving on. It sets a very dangerous precedent and it feeds the beast we're trying to slay um, in that women are then made commodities, that they're objects that are just simply used at, at a single whim, use it, toss it out type of thing. So it's a bit of a catch-22 because how do you sit here and tell a young woman what to do with their body when we've been singing the song of you should be free to make your own choices, you know? So, I mean, I think it just boils down to those values, you know? I think if, if anything, it's scary because you find that there are a lot of um, trendy values that are adopted. So Munu actually doesn't believe that it's just sex. But because, as the trend says, it's just sex, you then must behave like it's just sex. All the while, you are hurting yourself and leading on to all these mental health issues, you know, anxiety, depression, you know, leading on to suicide and all, and all of all of the very, very difficult things that are going on that we don't even know about. You know. So it's a real catch 22, man. Um, I don't envy, I don't envy anyone raising, raising children generally right now. It's very difficult because what do you teach them? What do you say? What is the right and what is the wrong, you know? Um, it's, very, it's very hard. So you can't be lukewarm. And, but in the same breath, you really, do you really have the right to be hot or cold when you're giving someone the agency to make decisions over their own life? So I think if, if there's a pitfall, it would be the values. Knowing oneself, because right now, you know, we, we, were, we were called the MTV generation. Um, and our values be became what we saw on TV. And then there was this weird cocktail with, you know, um, Sunday school and, you know, then reality of growing up and stuff. Um, so I would say, find your values, hey? It's okay, even if you don't, even if you are a woman in the 21st century who's not a feminist, we're not going to burn you at a stake, hey? It's okay. You know, go on. It's fine. Because, you know, I, I, I wish if any, if, if someone could take something away from this is be 100, as cliche as it sounds, be 100% you. Like, find your values. What do you actually believe in? And stick with it. Don't be angry because it's cool to be angry. You know, just because it's cool to be angry. If you're going to be angry and you have scars to be angry about, then because you have the scars for it and you are angry about something, be angry, find your method of healing and heal. Not because it's a cool thing to be upset or to be, I told you that the, the emo thing, uh, I'm always laughing about it with my family. It's like, guys, I was such a miserable kid. Why was I so miserable? Like, in pictures are so miserable. And there's no reason. Because I was spoiled at everything I wanted. I was just miserable because it was cool. I was an emo kid, goth kid, 
that's what, you know, that's, the, <laughs> that's what was cool at that time. So I would say find your values, honey. Find your values and stick with them and, and be true to self because what agency means, what we've been burning bras for, is for you to be unapologetically yourself by your own terms. So don't be you uh, via uh, what is going on via hashtag. Be you because doja autori, you know. So you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, find find you. The value system is really the, it's really 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 difficult. So we can't get rid of, can't get rid of country. It's, it's you can't. There's no jack reverse on that point. We've already fought for the agency, and it's here, right? So if you think that, no, it's, it can't, yeah, I catch feelings and so, it's okay to catch feelings. No, we don't, no, not everyone, not all of us, we move. No, no, not all of us just move. Not all of us, uh, no, not all of us just move. You are you. So deal with things the way you do, right? If you are comfortable with being objectified, that's you. That's your agency. You don't mind being a commodity because you have the freedom to be a commodity if you want to. And if you don't agree with being commoditized, you know, I don't even know if that's a word, but you know, <laughs> because if, you, if you're not comfortable with it, then that's okay, that's you. Also allow those who believe they are comfortable with living life this way, let allow them, because that's their agency too. Stop infringing on other people's agency as well. So you find your thing, this is who you are, these are your values, they don't have to be. Christian, they don't have to be, you know, they don't have to be Muslim, they don't have to be, they don't have to be anything new age. They just have to be you and what you stand for. And that, that will help you navigate a lot of things. We spoke about values earlier, where I was saying that they, they help you, that, that's your campus, your moral campus, yes. That, that is precisely it. And so we, we, need, we, need our, we need our girls, we need our young, our young beautiful women who are so empowered to have their own set of values that determine who they are, what they stand for. I'll, I'll say confidence first, right? Confidence needs to, to feel like the perfect tailored, tapered suit that you're putting on. And as long as you're putting it nicely and it fits perfectly, Whatever story that you are letting somebody know, or whatever story that you are sharing with somebody, or whatever craft that you are part of, can really be, you know, can really be seen. Because it's easy for you to say, Marcus, you're passionate about it. Because when I speak about it, even I think my eyes really sparkle. Yeah, I think maybe it's the light. <laughs> <laughs> but confidence is the bigger, a bigger part of, of 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 what you do as a cre, as a creator. Because if you're not confident about how can people really uh, uh, get into it, uh, how can what you do also connect? How can you translate it as an idea to somebody who has got the potential to amplify it and say, I am sold, let's do it. Because also it's not about creating alone, it's also about marketing, marketing it and selling it. The bigger part other than creating is selling it. So it's, it's all of those things, it's confidence, to walk your path, uh, sometimes I feel the tenacity to know that things can crumble and still be able to, you know, do what you need to do, and not care about what family said, what your friends said, what the industry is saying, and still be able to just keep it moving. So it's uh, it's that and. And I kind of feel like also sometimes the, the, the industry, when you look at it, you know, because I think gents being gents, they know how to, to, to do what they, how to maneuver the way that they maneuver, you know, because you being a provider sometimes comes back to you at that point in time when you're like, it's either I do this or I don't. But with women, it always feels like at a certain point in time when things, when you look at things and things do not come full circle the way that you're projecting it, you're always going to be like, there's someone who's going to marry me. It always feels like behind, behind. Very subtle behind your mind as much as you're pushing and you're doing all of these things. You're like, I can have somebody who can take care of me. Which is not wrong. But the reality is when you already somehow, 
have got an option B as a player. Chances are even if option A were to test you and knock you out, you are able not to come back the next day and say, let's, let's rumble, let's do this thing. You're like, I think option B really looks like the fit. And I think that's how we have lost a whole lot of amazing crea creators as women along the way. We have lost them one through that because the moment when I feel like also marriage is really an institution that also has got its own values that it values. And uh, how the woman's space is really portrayed within another institution, it's, you know, and it also depends from one family to the next. And also, as a creator, being part of the creative industry, how it's considered, and you being a woman trying to, to put in work within that space, it's, it's a whole lot of, you know, also, also other, um, what's the word? That's the word. I think there are also also other antagonistic forces also against that you also have to. So if you want it bad, which means you also have to fight against society, what people are saying and everything, but still be able to hold your own and still be able to build, and still be able to inspire the team that's that's around you up until the vision is realized. So yeah, for women for 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 women within the creative space, I'll be like. If you want it, but I'll make sure you want it bad. And if you're about to go at it, go at it like your life depends on it. It's the same thing also for guys. Your forces might be also a little bit more. But still, for whosoever wants whatever that they need, you know, the question is how hungry are you willing to actually get it? Because life really without you doing what you need to do, sometimes it really comes, you know, yeah. So it's, it's all of that, it's all of that. I think as far as women, women creators are concerned, I'll be like, yeah, guys, it's, it's amazing having you in this space because it's amazing also having your voice in, in, in the space because it's, it really is, other than it just being a good blend, it also helps the industry move differently, right? And 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 the difference is always the 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 difference is always the one factor that will keep things, you know, moving, growing, multiplying, doing different, and you know, because it's as good as like if you were to have um, ten different photographers. And you've got two women photographers that are also doing that. How they see things sometimes may be the reason why another guy will look and be like, okay, maybe I'm seeing this thing differently. Or the approach, you know, from a, from a creator point of view, from a professional point of view, from, you know, it's, it's different facets. You know, it's Adam Day, it's, it's we, all need, we all are who we got. And we all need each other. So, you know, we gotta build together. You know, the tough, like, we don't, we don't really talk about, about this, like, in the blog space and stuff like that. Because right now, what's really trendy, tell your story, tell your story. And we're just not, there's just so much content and people are not consuming all of it so it becomes really competitive i would say if if you can <laughs> the first thought that came to me was like don't do it <laughs> like, don't do it don't do it do you know what it's such a difficult journey um you've got to be ready you've got to be ready to say if i die i die it's not a i'm going to do this as my pastime kind of thing if you will really and truly want to be successful in content creation I mean we have like in the Afrotopia space we have we have a couple of of content creators who have endorsements and stuff like that I'll use Yaya as an example right because I've been watching and it's a if I die I die it's like, okay, there's time for my funnies and stuff like that but she's on her grind every single day because there's a million and one billions of tiktokers right or reelers or whatever and you're saying 
This is supposed to be my bread and butter? And you want to do it as your pastime? Okay. I wish you the best of luck, you know? But I think my best of luck is going to waste. Because <laughs> you can't, like, if you, if, you, if you love, if you believe, first of all, I'll say you need to have, you need to have a story. Everyone's got a story. But you have to have, like, a story. What is it that fuels your your desire to do this. Is it, oh, I'm a good writer? Then maybe, maybe your, your, your efforts could be best suited writing for an established platform. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have your own .wordpress.org um, domain. There's no harm in having it. I mean, it's free. But then maybe you should be writing somewhere where your voice will be heard more efficiently. Because what, what then becomes difficult is that we think that all of us should start up. We don't have to all start up. Let me, you know what? Call me whatever you want to call me. We don't all have to start up. Honestly, there's, ask anyone who started up and who's still going, successful or otherwise. Um, I don't consider myself successful. I don't consider myself successful until, like, there are numbers to support that there are young people that are being impacted positively by what I do. So I don't consider myself successful, but I know successful people. And in their, as far as their stories are concerned, if you have honest conversations with them, they will tell you that there's been more than enough of the times where they've thought to themselves, I don't think I really have what it takes to pull this through. It's because starting up and turning, turning this into a business is not for the faint-hearted. It requires pieces of you that you may not quite get back. You won't. You may not get them back. You may not. I'm always laughing with my team. I'm like, you guys stole my prime 20s, y'all. You stole my 20s. I want my 20s back. <laughs> like, I want my 20s back. Because you spend so much, you spend a lot of time trying to build the thing. So to any young woman who's watching this, if you're not ready for war, don't. If you're not ready to lose a part of yourself, to the dream, to seeing this into reality or seeing it into fruition, don't do it. I really do not recommend because you will waste your time. But isn't it better not to waste time but to invest it? You invest it in seeing it even if you are not the one because it's also passing on the baton. <laughs> so you may not be the one who gets to the finish line, but if you do it right, that vision, whether you are there or you're not, it will happen. It will happen. So you've got to, you've got to be, you've got to be ready for war. You need to be ready to see what, ah, Sharamba, so, uh-uh. If you're in it, you're in it. So I would say, like, tighten up your boots and go. If you're in it. There's no way, you can't half, half, you can't do half ease with it. You've got to be within 100%. Because there's going to be times, because when you're within 100%, when you have moments where you're second-guessing yourself, when you grow weary, because you will, you remember that, okay, so I don't have any other option except to see this thing through. So I think that's, that's what I'd say. But then, and then my strategy, I'd say my strategy, the little secret weapon, little big secret weapon called God. <laughs> <laughs> pretty simple, um, pretty simple. Uh, progressive Christian sitting here who will advocate for LGBTQIA+, I, who identifies an ally on, in the alphabet family, and still a Christian. So I'll say God, definitely God. Um, it helps even whoever, it's faith-based, you know, um, Believing something beyond yourself helps because there are times, you know, when you have to face the music and you've got to be, you got to ask yourself some tough questions like, okay, what do we do now? I don't ask myself, what do we do now? I'm like, so what's next? <laughs> I don't, it's none of my business whether this works or not. I'm just a foot soldier and that's how I look at it, you know. So it's, it's really, it's really, really God and it's really prayer. And for those who, who don't believe um, specifically in, a, in, in the Christian God, I would say just have, have, believe in something. Whether you want to believe in, in people, people will disappoint you, I must, I must warn you. But believe in something bigger than yourself. Um, 
believe in something bigger than yourself and sometimes just having that vision having that dream sometimes is enough if you're not if you're not a believer you know um and use what you have so moving moving past the whole okay so now you've decided to tighten up your bootstraps and you're you're within i'd say look use what you have what is it that you have from my experience i didn't have money but I, I, I draw, I continue to draw and I drew from my life experiences. So as, as, as a kid that I wrote, that I worked at ZBC, you know, that I got to meet interesting people. So use what you have. Sometimes it's not, people are, people are sometimes the best resource. I only finished paying for, I only finished paying for the website, I think, when we turned two. Because <laughs> I, I asked a friend, and it's like, yo, this was my first experience learning. Do. Okay, no, exposure, exposure does not pay, not at all times. It doesn't pay. Because it's like, look, I'm going to do this thing. And <laughs> goodness, goodness, I really appreciate, I appreciate him making the website, but it was a really, really shite website. <laughs> Our first website was the worst. It was built on Drupal, and it was just a disaster. Like, it was just a real disaster. <laughs> but anyway, and this was before I knew what WordPress was, and, you know. So, only finished making, paying for the website, like, you're, like, you're two of our existence. Because, well, the money wasn't there, <laughs> you know. So, use what you have. You have people that you know. And it's not always that you're like, okay, I need money. Could you please invest in my startup? These are first world problems. Hey, where, where you read? You read, you read in the business studies um, textbooks that, you know, the best people to fund your idea are your family and your friends. You know, that's what they say, your family and friends. You know, they can put money into it, blah, blah, blah. They probably will not. <laughs> they probably will not in an African landscape, you know. Um, so what they might do is connect you to people who can help. So if you have, have, have friends, and I don't mean like in the sense of BFFs, you have schoolmates, high schoolmates who are doing different things. Some are doing graphic design, some are doing web development, some, some are into digital marketing, some are, you know, they are, those are your resources. Ask them questions. Never deny yourself the opportunity to learn from people in your circle, from strangers, from people. Just ask, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked someone's willing. Some people are very willing to share what they know because what do they do with it? They just know the things and it doesn't impact anyone at all. So I would say use people. They are your best, they are your best resource. Um, ask them, and by use them, I don't mean use and manipulate. I mean ask them, like, this is a thing. So maybe don't necessarily give out your stake, your, the stake to your, to your entity and stuff like that, but... You know, pay, you know, you can offer to pay for it. You can offer to barter and things like that, you know. Call Joshua Nube is the one who taught me the art of the barter. Like, there's always something to trade. You can always swap. You, there's always something you can swap, swap things with. Somebody always, as long as you have value, the other guy has value, you simultaneously need each other's value, or at least one person, at least there's, there's, a willing, there's one willing participant, and you can convince the next person, but this is the value that I offer, then... You could barter. So use people in your circle. So, so far it's been three things. So one is if you're not, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not ready to do this all the way, don't do it. And number two is use the community around you. Those are, those are your resources, definitely. Those are the people that will, will carry you through. And those are, chances are, the people who don't even put money but just give information or give a service. Those are probably like your biggest fans all the way. And those are the people that will cheer you on on days when you're just like, bleh, like I'm done with this thing. Like I'm so, like I am tired. And then this is when this random person who's been cheering you on since the beginning is like, yo, I saw this thing, it was amazing. It's like, it was, it was amazing. It's like, oh, thank you so much. You have no idea what this means. It means so much because it keeps you, it keeps you going. So, yeah, I would, I'll probably say that. Um, what strategy did I? And also when you're like, when you're ready to say, if I die, I die, you, you, you'll make a plan. You, it will make, it will, it fuels you. You will make a plan. I don't know, I don't know the math, but it, it gets you. You find, you maneuver all these, 
difficulties and you make a plan. So for me, my make a plan ended up being you know, loitering <laughs> because <laughs> cause there I would be in a hotel lobby just trying to get some Wi-Fi just so I can upload an article, you know. Don't have money for a coffee, you don't, sometimes you don't have money for bus fare and stuff like that. And this is the beginning of your story. This is just, this is, this is, this is, sometimes this is what it takes. Some have it easy. I'm not saying that the struggle is, is within for everyone. But I'll tell you what, if you are a young, if you're a young girl in, 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 in Wange, if you're, if you're a young Zimbabwean woman and you, you are just, you want to do this thing, chances are that it's going to be tough. So you've got to buckle up if, if you want to do it because the, the options to do it in a, in a way that um, alters your integrity, ah, the options are plenty. The options are plenty. And when you decide, and I think that would be number four, is that a very important thing to get from the get-go. I mentioned, I did mention God, but like those principles, like you have to have like a sense of what? What is the line I will not cross? What is it? What do I actually stand for as a person? Because best believe, again, as a woman in that space, there are just some doors where people will put my disclaimers that are beneath your values. They are that just, you know, gutter level of, of, <laughs> of conduct. And you weigh the odds. What are you going to use to weigh? When it comes to the crossroads, what are you going to use to determine the, ah, this line? I'm not going to do that, am I? What is it that you're going to use to weigh that out? What are your va values? What is it that you use to do my checks and balances? Could, okay, yeah, no, that's a crossroad. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely not doing that. You know. So the only reason why we can say, oh, we're not doing that is because you know your values. You know the worth of what you're trying to trying to achieve so yeah definitely definitely i hope that helps though i really hope <laughs> i hope it means something to somebody there, there are no secrets out here guys <laughs> there is a bit called hard work it's uh is the common is the common denominator to everything or to everybody who has ever done something that you look and you're amazed about there's a, a key thing called forever learning there's a key thing called uh, finding yourself finding you among us the chaos because the chaos may not be just be outside of you it may, it may not just be around you it might also be inside you right how do you in a world where we are living where in a world where everybody's trying to compete with each other to become better or to outperform or to outdo everybody the better space to be or the better version that you can be is you first when you know you first, you, 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 are now, you are now in a position to understand your strength, your weaknesses. How do you complement this? What do you need there? How, what, how do you complement this? What do you need to work on? But more importantly, uh, it's, it's, it's a constant day-to-day -day understanding that you have to put in the work. You have to put in the work inside yourself as an individual, but also you have to put the work in terms of use craving to do more you say you know what if yesterday i was able to do this and i considered it my, and i and also you have to get this best way you do what you do and you are happy with what you've done the validation is good it's dope right it makes you it, it adds on to it but the fire has to live within you you can't let somebody have your thunder or have your fire because if they do, if for that day they did not give you that thunder, if for that day they did not give you that fire, you fall short. And more, uh, and, and, and the worst part is you might fall short way and fall, you might, you, might, you might fall short and fall back way more than where you're supposed to take it. So it's, it's in you, it's first internalize you, internalize, in, internalize all that you need to. If it's affirmations, affirm yourself, affirm the possibilities of who you are, how you being here is a miracle and how you being here is a, is a blessing towards the world and what you do really is about impact and you love what you do, right? And you, you also have to love what you do. You also have to, to be obsessed about it and because 
obsession really is also a thin line between uh, sanity and insanity. You knowing what you're obsessed about sometimes will also give you the fire to keep pushing, the fuel to keep, when everybody says, we can't see what you're seeing, you know, because a whole lot of people will look at it and be like, are you, you might, you, the way that you're doing all of this, it feels like you, you already knew what you wanted to do way before, like, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring myself out. I now know that, okay, I'm the energy doctor, but now I'm always been asking myself, how do I make sure that I spread the energy as well at the same time? So you don't get to things. You bit by bit things also. Some things reveal themselves to you. Some things you get inspired along the way. But more importantly, it's how do you harness all of those things that are happening in and around you to, to focus them into one, in, into one thing or into things that you're really passionate about so that you, know, you can grow things. Because um, I, I really feel like, oh, every individual came in this world really to give back to something. And what you give back to the world really can inspire also another person coming through. Because we all are light, but we need to constantly be lighting each other so that the world is a beautiful place. Without us lighting each other, which means, you know, we're doing more harm than good. And if also you're not saving purpose, which means you have killed somebody without you noticing it. Because energy is infectious, and more importantly, we are not just physical beings, we're spirit beings, you know. And spirit connects to spirit. And, we, and in, in who we are as spirit, we are really the same. I know someone better, I know somebody poor or less or anything, it's just how can we add on to each other so that, you know, we keep, we keep it flowing. So it's the bigger part of it is also about flowing. And... When, when you get to a space where you, you have now, understood, you've now under, understood who you are as an individual, it, it becomes easy doing what you do. Not easy in terms of that, that you don't put in the work. The work needs to be poured day in, day out. Even when you understand yourself, which means you still need to add on to something. If it's a book, you need to read on. If it's a podcast you're listening to, you need to, you know what, if it's research that you understand that it grows, you need to keep on doing that because it's a constant process of growing. And the constant process of growing means that you're putting in work. And, 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 and that's the unfortunate part that I see with most people. The putting in work part is where it come, where a lot of people fall short. Putting in work doesn't mean you sharing with somebody that, ah, I'm putting in work. No. Putting in work is, if you're a photographer, it's literally saying, okay, to how many, how many shoes did I shoot this week? Then from all the shoes that you shot this week, what, what are my top five picks of the, of, of the shoots that I did this week? Okay, I shot this. This was a beautiful angle. How can next time when I'm actually shooting next week or the next month, how can I make sure that I, I get more pictures aligned to this kind of feel or this kind of look and what? You, it's, it's you being also your own critique. You know what you like and you know what world class look like. So are you saying you're there? If you're there, then you're like, cool, how can I still keep on going on? How can I still keep on? Because it's a constant process. The pro Unfortunately, the process is about putting in the work. You do, you do something good today, forget about it. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of also forgetting about the dope things that I'm, I'm always told by people. Like, oh, that thing that you did that at the time, oh, it was for, I'm like, good, kudos for you. Thanks for the feedback. But what can I do that's dope than what I did last week? It's me against me. It's never me against the next person. I don't even look at the competition. Because as long as I am competing me against me, which means I understand that if Makasi did not read, which means you're self-sabotaging who you are. If Makasi did not look at and understand uh, what color psychology really is all about, or what the, the season's colors th this time are all about, which means you're self-sabotaging. If you don't read any articles on Google about which artists did this mural where and what are some of the key murals that are being done towards environment, towards awareness, towards all of these other things, and you did not do that, you're self-sabotaging. What are other brands that are investing within the mural space that I can also engage? What also, if we're doing work that's aligned to this, how can I change the trajectory of the work being done to this, to that? Because the point is, at the same time, if for everybody who has been looking at the work that we're doing as a calligraph, we are building an institution. We're not even looking at ourselves and looking at me as just saying, Marcus, 
That's why right now when you look at us, like it started, it was Nyasha and me for a greater, longer time, which is one of the most hectic because sometimes you do a side gig here, take pretty much 75% or 80% or 50% of the money. You are still left with nothing to put back to yourself or to make sure that you look good. But, you know, it's just a dream that you have to keep alive. But because also you've got a supportive family, they hold you through that journey. They hold you through those difficult times. And it's, and it's hectic because sometimes it's, it's hectic also being, uh, being, um, being a male child and understanding that your role is a provider. And still at the back of your mind, you're stuck to your dream. And still you went to varsity, you came back. And with all of that, you, you know you're supposed to come back with the bread, but now you're literally okay. You money, you had a gig, you got $100 on your hand. You understand that as far as calligraph is concerned right now, we need one, two, three things. And still we have to part ways with 80. And the only money you got is 20. The sacrifice is sometimes so that you got to make. How bad do you want it? Because everyone talks, the, like, I want it so bad. But are you willing to make sure that the little money that you have, you can part, you can part ways with 85% of it because you want to see that dream alive? And, and get you correctly, it's not a, a pity story or anything, or I'm sad about it. Like, I'm happy about it. Because I had to understand sacrifice at a very earlier stage. Even if today if things were to go sideways. You know, one thing that I always look at, I'll look at it and be like, okay, cool. But I used to sacrifice 85%. I can still sacrifice this. I can still downgrade to certain spaces. Because I, do, I still do understand that there was a possibility of where we were and where we are and where we want to be. It's possibilities. But more importantly, putting in the work, the sacrifices that come with the work, internalizing and knowing who you are as an individual, because if you don't know yourself, how then can you lead a vision? You're leading people astray. So it's, yeah, it's a lot. But, you know, gosh, yeah, I will drink water on that. It's a brack. <laughs>
as Marcus, uh, Marcus Vinavashe on, uh, on Facebook, um, the Marcus ZW on Twitter, and on Instagram. I, I prefer having things simpler so that people should not struggle finding me. Then, on Cali then as far as Calligraph is concerned, you can, you can catch us on Facebook. We are Calligraph. And uh, on Instagram, we are calligraph.co. You know, there was another calligraph. Would have wanted to just be calligraph, you know. And then um, on Twitter, we are calligraph without the A. So it's C A L I G R P H. So that's where you'll find us. The hashtag, you can follow Energy Doctor. It's Energy Doctor with a D O K T A. You know, check out what the boy is doing. That's the official. Hashtag for all the things that I do. And, you know, local guy as well. But, I mean, there are a whole lot of people calling themselves local guys. But, you know, I'm the only local guy in Zimbabwe. <laughs> but, yeah, and what are we working on, you know, guys? Oof. we got a series that we're working on currently uh, where we're also expanding and trying to see uh, different other elements that we can do because we're trying to – part of who we are, is, as I say, like is, is how can we grow. How can we amplify what we do? How can we change these things? How can we change the game? So part of our series that we're doing right now, we've done three murals, one in Budiriro, one in Kambuzuma, one in, what is the other space? One in Fakosi. It's called Bold, uh, experimenting with prints, with different color palettes. Uh, it, it's, it's just mind blowing. Uh, you know, we, we also want to take that bold series in different other country. Uh, it'll be dope actually to take it outside or south side of Zimbabwe, just like what we did with the Let Love Lit series. We did, uh, I think, about two. One in Fakose, one in, uh, one in Fakose, one in Budiro, then the other one we did in Dusaka, Zambia. So it'll be amazing also to have like, part of that series take it also outside of Zimbabwe. You know, there's COVID. But still, if that does not happen, we'll take it all around the country. Uh, we are doing a little something, something. Uh, okay, guys, you know, this is the part where I do not like sharing, but, you know. We're doing something, something with Shingai, uh, for, uh, by Shingai, I mean Shingai Shonio, just in case, you know, you can follow Shingai. And, you know, uh, visuals will be dropping a little bit later, sooner, a, a little bit later in the year. But in the meantime, it's still work in progress. Start work, I think this, I think, yeah, we've already started work, yeah, so... That also be, that's also like some amazing collaborations that I'm doing. We'll also be doing some like, oof, some, some, of, some of the work, you know, I can't really, I'm not in the liberty of sharing much because, you know, it's still all under, it's still all under works, still a whole lot of uh, how can we do this concepts and everything. So when it's done, you know, we're always sharing. The status are always lit. You know, the work that we do, you know, is always lit. Like, guys, like, me now, me now, you know that the work that we do is lit, guys. Like, I, I, I do not even be telling us, like, oh, you think, I don't know, I do not think, I know it. Because, you know, we're building it out from within. And, you know, we are passionate about it, we are intentional about it. And, you know, and genuinely, it's, it's been amazing work that we're doing. So, yeah, it's, we can expect some more amazing work, more, more, my job work and and yeah and and I think I don't know as far as the energy doctor is concerned you know you can expect surprises all along the year we can't wait to be sharing things that we're working on and the things that we are doing you know but we'll let our social media do the talking because we like doing the working some more so when we come on social media it's all about the work that we have done the work that we have put on, and you, you can give us feedback, but even still, if you don't give us feedback, it's the right, guys, we did that things. <laughs> we took it from idea, we built it, now you see it. The only thing that you can do is just tell us, oh, it's not this, it's no, 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 but either way, we did what we had to do, and we are happy with it. And that's also one thing that I will leave unto you. Be happy with the stuff that you do. You know, don't wait for people to clap for you. When you're in the house, when you wake up, be like, when say, thank you, go, you be like, I also thank myself of the work that I'm about to do today. Because God just bless you with the life. We're not going ahead and do what you need to do. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about that. Just be, you know, be grateful. And more importantly, guys, be grateful, be thankful. There's, there's a lot more that we may need in our lives, but sometimes I think it's beautiful with the little that we have. And also, if you got more, you know, Share a little round. 
we've always got something to give. For some of us, it's energy. If it can inspire you and if it can make you see the world with a different pair of eyes and if you can go ahead and do the most with it and actually give birth to beautiful and amazing things, I'm, I'm living life. I, I fulfill my purpose. For others, it's, if you are blessed financially, share around, you can help another person, you know, live to see another day, live to gravitate and to make sure whether their dreams are possible, their life is possible, that the realities that they see can be seen differently because you got the power. Each and, each and every one of us really individually has got a certain power that we have and we've got a certain gift that we have. If we, if we are consciously conscious about giving and sharing it, Really, the world would be an amazing place altogether. And on that note, sit the energy talk to you the building. Enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That brings us to the end of this masterclass. Thank you for watching Connect Create. Did you enjoy this masterclass? Make sure you like, share, and follow us on all our social media platforms. If you would like to receive exclusive content and behind the scenes of this masterclass, make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for the Connect Creates directory. This project was brought to you by Afri Digital in partnership with Creatives Tribe ZW, supported by the British Council through the Digital Collaboration Agile Grant that helps to promote and enhance the profiles of women in leadership and to support creative skills development.